Who will New England target with the 14th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft? Is a trade a possibility? With Bill Belichick, you never know. We've got Andrew Cooper of the Fantasy Alarm here to talk about it. Let's get to it. Okay, welcome to the Draft Brothers podcast for all things 2023 NFL Draft. In this episode, we'll be diving deep into the Patriots' draft strategy, potential picks, and how they can build a championship team from the upcoming season. Whether you're a diehard Pats fan or just a casual football enthusiast, you won't want to miss this exciting and informative discussion. I am your host, Jeff Asley, and I'm joined by my draft brother, Dan Turner. And our guest today is Andrew Cooper of the Fantasy Alarm. And uh, Andrew's expertise is the Patriots, and he's going to help us understand what New England may do in the 2023 NFL Draft. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Hey, what's happening, boys? Yeah, I've, I've been watching the series, and I have to say um, I'm pretty jealous of some of these other fans of other teams where, like the Steelers, for instance, they tell you they're going to pick Najee Harris. They pick Najee Harris. Everybody <laughs> claps, right? Like, Or they tell you they're going to pick Kenny Pickett. With the Patriots, doesn't quite work out that way every year, right, boys? Uh, no, not when you have Bill Belichick is the one making the decisions. You never know what he's going to do. And we're going to talk about him next. Right. All right, so this brings me to my question. What would you say is the best case scenario here for New England with the 14th pick? If you could have the perfect draft here, Andrew, who are you hoping lands or falls to New England? Right. Well, so this time of year, we, there's there's three picks, right? There's the uh, pick that the fans want. There's the pick that makes the most sense. And then there's the rumors, right? And uh, they don't always we like overlap. All three. We like all three. We like all three. So I have one that I think overlaps all of them. Like, obviously, the boring, safe, smart pick is like a tackle, right? And the picks that the fans want is obviously a, it's a wide receiver every time for every team, right? Like, <laughs> if it were the fans get the pick, the first whole round would be wide receivers and quarterbacks, right? Uh, but... For me, I think this one player uh, kind of fits a lot of that. He fits a need. He fits. Uh, it's a fun pick. And there are some rumors uh, regarding this player. Uh, my favorite Patriots defense was the 2014 defense. They had uh, they had Brandon Browner on one side as the big boy, and they would just put him on the biggest guy and put a safety over the top and just say, go beat that guy up. And then Darrell Revis will be on the other side and just – He'll just take whoever that is away. And it was this was during the Peyton Manning uh, Broncos era where, you know what I mean? So it was like Brandon Browner takes Demarius Thomas, Devin McCourty over the top. Darrell Revis just takes Manny Sanders out of the game. It was great, right? We won the Super Bowl. So I want them to go out and potentially take one of these big corners. I think Witherspoon's going to be gone. Christian Gonzalez could be gone. For me, I like Joey Porter Jr. And okay. I know there are a few other teams that like it. Like I mentioned, the Steelers, they want him there. And I just think that that would be not only would it be a fun pick, it would fit a need, it would fit what I want, and it would be hilarious to see Joey Porter have to root for the Patriots because he is a notorious. His Joey Porter's father notoriously does not like the Patriots. That's as some you guys karma know. right there. That's some karma. So I'm that I feel like that pick fits a lot of what I look for, right? Uh, you know, and you know, Bill could do something crazy, but that one just makes sense to me. What, what do you think about uh, Bill upgrading his offensive weaponry uh, early on in the draft? And what, at what position do you think uh, it would be best served to do so? I know you've uh, you know, signed a couple of players, Mike Kosicki, Juju Smith-Schuster. Do you think there's any players in the early couple of rounds where they can make a, an immediate impact? Yeah, so this this fits right into Rumorville, right? Because there, are, I've actually heard a ton of different rumors of, of, of different options. One thing Bill really likes to do is – Zig when everyone else zags, right? And build build his teams to take away the other guy's best players and not play into that, right? So I look at like look at the Jets with Sauce Gardner, right? He only plays outside. He only played eight snaps in the slot. The Patriots are now building this offense with Mike Gusecki and Hunter Henry and Juju playing in the slot. I mean, what are they going to do? Put him on Devonte Parker the whole game and just waste him? Or are they going to make him cover Gusecki? Is, are they going to move him into the slot on Juju? It's like, yeah, so he does those things. So I think there's a real possibility that uh, they do draft either a tight end or a pass catching back. I, I've heard that they're infatuated with Bijan Robinson, which everyone would hate for fantasy football, right? Like, we'd all hate that. <laughs> it would be the uh, it would be the apocalypse. And I've, I've, the thing is that they, I've heard that. I've heard beat writers talk about Jameer Gibbs, 
Uh, they did had a meeting with Kendry Miller, so that's on the table. And then um, the the one that would play into what the beat writers want and what the fans want is uh, Zay Flowers. Uh, Zay Flowers, just because he's been very hyped. They've met with him twice. They like to do this little thing where they meet with you once. And uh, they did it too with uh, before they drafted uh, Nikhil Harry. Is they met they met with him, taught like told him a bunch of things from the playbook, and then they met with him again and say, "Hey, how much did you remember?" So that's like a little thing they like doing. And Zay Flowers is a Boston College guy. It's Boston based team, so that's another one. So I, I do think it's possible. I just hope that if they do pick somebody, it's within the first three rounds because we've seen kind of statistically with wide receiver, especially after the first three rounds, once the comp picks start happening. That you know, you don't really get too many rock solid guys from that range, right? If you like sports and playing sporting games, download the Champions Round app, get playing, and start winning. And use promo code Draft Bros for a free ten dollars. And check out our newest game mode, Spicy Slips. If you love live sports gaming, the NBA, or now Major League Baseball, or you want some extra action this NFL offseason, come play Spicy Slips. Build a two to five leg parlay of live props and win big today. We are talking Patriots draft with Andrew Cooper of the Fantasy Alarm, and you can reach him on Twitter at Coop A Fiasco. That's a that's another story altogether, huh, Andrew? <laughs> um, he's been featured on Sirius XM Radio as well as the Better Network, and today we've got him for Patriots information. So let's talk more about the Pats. They've got eleven picks in this draft, including six in the top one hundred and fifty. What do you think? I know this is a crazy question because it involves Belichick, but what do you think he can do to maximize those picks? What, what's, what do you think their plan is? I mean, you, you would think that it would involve a trade up. Knowing Belichick, he'll trade down and at some point he'll have 30 picks and then he'll <laughs> trade, he'll package back up and then t- pick the entire third round, right? Like that's kind of his <laughs> yeah. style, right? Like last year, I wanted us to take Trent McDuffie, the cornerback, in the first round and they traded back and the Chiefs took him. I'm like, why are mm-hmm. we helping them? We should yeah. not be helping of all the teams, right? But um, I could see them doing something with – so uh, as far as capital goes, and correct me if I'm wrong, they have a first, a second, a third, and then they have three-fourths and four-sixths. So just like a ton of these kind of yeah, Lots whatever of type range picks. Around. Yeah. I, what exactly. I would want them to do personally, and I feel like this isn't asking too much. It would be a normal trade. We've seen uh, like just a couple of years ago – the Rams had uh, a third round pick. They took Taylor Rapp, but they had two players they really wanted. So they they took two more picks, 90 and 96, and traded, or 94 and 99, and traded back up to 70 and took Daryl Henderson. Like if we have picks 107, 117, 135, if we yeah. could take two of those fourths and trade it just to get back in the third round, doesn't have to be 70, could be 80, 90. I would like that. I would like first, second, two shots in the third round. Uh, one of them hopefully being a wide receiver before you know the, things kind of fall off there. I think that's a pretty reasonable move. Drafting 11 guys is is wild because Belichick has a history of cutting these guys before the season even starts. He's the GM and the coach. So if he wants to draft Kevin Harris in the sixth round and then cut him and then bring him back, he, he's going to do that. He did that last year. So I don't want to take all these six-round picks and cut half of them. It's ridiculous. It's, right. it's ridiculous behavior, is it not, boys? It is. He's got his ways. He <laughs> definitely has his ways, and we all know that. And I think it's it's smart to understand that uh, anything can happen with him. So yeah, right. Winning eighteen Super Bowls gives you a lot of rope. I guess. You can do whatever. Yeah, exactly. You do whatever you you yeah. And it's crazy that like the the crazy things he does. It, it doesn't even seem crazy in hindsight. But like Troy Brown had three interceptions. Mike Vrabel caught ten touchdown passes. Like he does whatever the hell he wants, and it, you know it works a lot of times, right? Yeah. Matchups and exploiting weaknesses, right? That's mm-hmm. his yeah. thing. So, uh, so Andrew, you did mention before, uh, you know, with wide receivers and tight ends. So, I just want to expand a little bit on it. It's a really deep tight end draft, uh, that, as we all know. Even with Hunter Henry and Mike Gusecki signed as the top two guys, do you think that uh, there's a, a case to be made that New England drafts another one? And if so, which one would be best for what Belichick likes to do? Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys asked this because I like you, I, you guys know me. I, you know, I my main focus is often tight end work. Like I do, I cover the Patriots. I I do a lot of uh, regular NFL stuff, but fantasy football, tight end wise, that's kind of my bread and butter, right? Um, and to the Patriots fans out there watching this, 
I can g- take the some of these prospects and just give you an example to give you a better idea of who these guys are and what it would mean if we take them, right? Because for the Patriots, not only is Mike Kosecki on one year deal, but this is the last year for Hunter Henry and uh, Johnny Smith is gone. Scotty Washington is like a converted wide receiver. The cupboards are essentially bare if they don't take one in this draft. So uh, with these prospects, the the big one. We have probably have to take him in the first round if we wanted him. Michael Mayer, he honestly profiles. Hunter Henry might be his best comparable player. Like Hunter Henry, Zach Ertz type player. The one knock on him is speed, but he can do it all. Great inline player, uh, can run the seams. So, you know, th- that's your Hunter Henry type if they want to do that. If they wanted to take Darnell Washington, it's kind of hard to comp him to anyone because you guys saw him at the combine. Like this guy is a... He's a freak, right? Like he moved that sled like like you asked him to pick up a lawn chair and move it to the other side of the yard. He's like, where do you yeah. want it, boss? Like he, it was crazy the way he moved that that sled. But he, to me, would be a Martellus Bennett type guy. I think he could, he has the upside to be better than Martellus Bennett, but the blocking is 100% locked in. I talked to Brandon Huffman from 247. He said that uh, when this guy was 17, 18, they were trying to convince him to switch it off as a tackle. That's how good his blocking is. And, yeah, and if he had just put on 30, 40 pounds, then he would be an offensive tackle, you know? Um, and then uh, the other the other type guy, if we wanted another Mike Gusecki, kind of bring somebody in and say, okay, uh, if this guy hits, we can let Gusecki walk. Those, those are guys like Dalton Kincaid, maybe Sam Laporta, guys that can play this slot, play wide receiver. So this draft has all the different versions. Wouldn't be surprised to see them take any one of them or multiple. Like, the guy loves tight ends. The, the cupboard's going to be bare next year. Maybe they do take one of these guys. So uh, glad you brought that up, dude. Play, play right in my wheelhouse. Hey, if I can build on that question, what do you see as an outlook just this year between Hunter Henry and Mike Gusecki? Yeah, so I think Hunter Henry is going to – to me, it's, it's pretty obvious that Hunter Henry is going to play in line. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a reporter, uh, beat writer, does a great job. His name's Alex Barth. Uh, for the Patriots, and he went and dug up nine to ten different quotes where Belichick re- referred to Mike Kosecki, and they people said the tight end Mike Kosecki, and he said, no, he's actually more of a big big wide receiver. And f- on at least five, six, seven occasions, he corrected people and said, I, th- I, I consider him more of a wide receiver. So I think that's what you see. You see Mike Kosecki playing in the slot, playing out wide, Hunter Henry in line, and then that lets you, especially if you're going to put Hunter Henry in line and then Gusecki with his foot tethered to the line out wide, Juju can go wherever he wants. Flanker, slot, doesn't need to tether his foot to the line, can go in motion. So I think that's the plan is just to kind of uh, use him as a Evan Engram type guy, Mike Gusecki, mm. which in fantasy, for the fantasy football folks out there, I know we're talking real football here, but fantasy football, it hurts Hunter Henry. Mike Gusecki could be in a good spot. Good information here. All right, well, it's time in the in the show for our one quick question. If you've watched the show before, it's a it's a yes or no answer. I'll ask a question. You say yes or no. Uh, and maybe after we're done, if there's some commentary we want to share, that's fine. So here's my question. Will Mac Jones be benched for Bailey Zappi at some point this season? And I'll start with you, Andrew. As a spicy question, I'll say I'll say no. No. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to go next this time. Daniel, okay. we'll uh, bring it rear. I'm going to say yes. Yes, he will be benched for Bailey Zappi. I, I just I don't see the, the consistency there, and I think it might wind up hurting him. Um, what do you think, Dan? I also think yes. Oh, <laughs> you guys, man. I, <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, the – I. I'm I'm supporting the Patriots Nation here. I'm putting them on my back. I'm the you know I, that's why you brought me on. I have to toe the company line. I think that's the case. I think they brought Bill O'Brien in for you know because I know Mac Bill with a, a little Alabama connection there. I think they're going to give him every shot, but I would not like if they do bench him. I would not be surprised. So you guys, it's a make or break I, year for him, right? I, yeah, and I can't blame you for saying yes, but I have to say no and hold <laughs> hold the line. <laughs> we appreciate uh, that good. Uh, dan right. any additional questions that just popped into your head because andrew's such a wonderful guest yes actually uh we something never really talked about uh besides you know Bijan ruining a uh, fantasy is, <laughs> is, 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 is running back so if you don't you know draft a, a running back high or whatever is stevenson good enough to to carry the load for you guys this year i think stevenson is amazing and that's not that's not a homer 
take from me because I was the one that was saying last year for fantasy football purposes, I was saying, hey, stay away from this guy. It's going to be a split. They're going to, uh, I mean, Ty Montgomery did come out and play a decent snap share week one uh, before he got hurt. You know, he played 25 snaps out of the backfield, got four targets. But you look at Mondre, man, and I thought he was just going to be a big bruiser, just a big goon. And he was like top five in targets for for. Uh, running backs. I don't think the question is whether he can be good enough or he is good enough to be an every down player. The question is whether they want that. The question is whether they, uh, they want to lean on him that heavily. Uh, And that's where we, you know, for fantasy purposes, we got to root against them taking a guy early, but I think right now they could easily just use him for every high leverage situation, goal line, pass downs, two minute drill. When you're running out the clock, when you're winning, those are the situations, and then mix somebody else in if they wanted to. I think he, I, I did. I would challenge somebody to find the 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 part of his game where we say, well, that's not good enough, right? Because you can do it with some guys. You could do it with Joe Mixon, say he's not great at pass blocking. You can do it with Austin Eckler and say he's not great between the tackles. I'm having a hard time figuring out what Mondre doesn't do well, which is why I don't want them to take Bijan Robinson. I, I love Bijan; he's awesome. I want him to go somewhere else and be awesome. If I if I could ask you to put your fantasy cap back on, absolutely, what? never take it off. Here, look at my fa- <laughs> got my fantasy alarm hat right here. What do you got there for me, boys? Is. Okay, there it is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, what What do you think is uh, uh, What do you think Damon Harris is going to do in Buffalo this year? I think Damon Harris is going to do uh, exactly what they need him to do, and it's going to be exactly terrible for her fantasy football. <laughs> because they have, like, if you really think about these, uh, the mobile quarterbacks are amazing for one thing for running backs. That's yards per carry. That's opening things up five. He could have five, six yards per carry in that offense with the RPO, which is borderline cheating, honestly. Like, uh, especially in college, it's cheating where you can get, like, the lineman can go like three yards downfield and then you can pull it back and throw it. That is insanity to me, but the Bills are some of the best in the league at running that play and you have to account for it. So it opens up the yardage, right? And that's why Miles Sanders has five yards of carry. And that's why JK Dobbins has 17 yards of carry or what is it? 6.7, something like that. It's insane, right? So with Damian Harris, I think that he's going to be so good between the twenties. And then you're going to have James Cook catching the, whatever passes the back gets out of the backfield. And then you're going to have, Josh Allen being an absolute battering ram and taking a good chunk of those touchdowns. And Damian Harris is going to be a guy that, you know, he, is, there will be games where he has, he scores a touchdown. There'll be games where he doesn't. And that's going right. to, that's going to be what he is to me. So not necessarily a consistent scorer. And, right. Uh, receiver of the ball in the red zone. As you're, yeah. as you want me to throw in, you want me to throw in the ultimate cliche this type of year, time of year and say that he, he might be good in best ball. <laughs> there we there go. go. Yes, a good best ball. Back. Good best ball. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it scores a touchdown. Doesn't that's great in best ball? Yeah. It's such a cop out. I really hate that, but I it is true yeah. for certain players. I think for him, yeah. it's probably true. All right. Well, hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in, and thank you, Andrew. We appreciate your you sharing your expertise and insights on the Patriots draft and what their plans might be. Be sure to follow Andrew. His Twitter handle is at Coop A Fiasco. And that's uh, C-O-O-P-A-F-I-A-S-C-O. And we appreciate your support. Please do us a favor. If you like the show, consider subscribing to the channel and leave us a comment. Literally any comment, because that stuff really does help out our channel. Uh, Download the Champions Round app and use the free $10 bonus code. And make sure to check out our separate Patriots mock video, mock draft video uh, with Andrew as well as our other NFL draft videos. Chances are we have discussed your team. If not, we'll get there soon. So thank you for that. Your entertainment is our passion. See you next time when we talk about the New York Jets.